Imagine being five years old, snatched from the warm embrace of your loving family, forced to leave the only home you've ever known, ripped from the culture you cherish and love. These are the ordeals many young Native Americans had to face throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, when the idea of assimilating Native Americans grew strong in people's hearts. The goal was to incorporate the Native Americans with the rest of the whites by separating them, undermining their form of government, and teaching their children to live like the white men. One such person who strongly shared that goal was Army Officer Richard H. Pratt. Pratt started the Carlisle Boarding School in Pennsylvania. He forced the Native American children to cease all Native ways and instead become more white to better blend with society. He forcefully removed the children from their homes where they returned many years later. He cut their hair and forbid them from speaking their native tongue or wearing their native dress. If a child disobeyed, the consequences were often severe. Physical, emotional, sexual, and psychological abuse. The boarding school found so much favor with the American government that more than 400 schools were created, enrolling around 100,000 children. The boarding schools were in operation for over a century between 1870 and 1987. eighteen seventies america was a prosperous land the california gold rush of the eighteen forties and fifties drove people westward as well as the u.s's booming idea of manifest destiny Americans were more geographically ambitious, knowing that they had only to gain Mexico's resource-rich California and England's Oregon to enhance both size and world power. Once these lands were attained, the United States' manifest destiny would be fulfilled. As the African-American assimilation proved a success, Americans began to wonder if the Native Americans could not too be assimilated. English colonists in the East had tried teaching European language and religion many years before. They implemented segregation and in Indian programs in universities, ultimately failing due to continuous conflict and debate. They also made attempts at removing native hostility by creating the Indian Peace Commission, apologizing for years of poor American diplomacy through broken treaties. However, the commission served a second purpose, to build a strategic relationship so the U.S. could take over and build on Indian land. The commission continued their diplomacy and went on to encourage the Native Americans to take the offer of American schooling. The indigenous peoples were not aware, though, that the U.S. was using their diplomatic bond's influence to teach them English, enabling them to better serve as laborers. Increased tension, raids, physical conflicts, and a yearning to have Native American land and Native American labor all contributed to the desire to stamp out America's native people. The idea to assimilate, if not eliminate, the Native American race spread, and Pratt's idea for Indian boarding schools caught fire. Ever since the Continental Congress funded education of Indian freshman students at Dartmouth College in 1775, the idea of civilizing Indians began. In 1875, Army Captain Pratt was fairly impressed when he commanded the African-American Buffalo Soldiers and Indian Scouts. Four years later, he started the vocational manual labor school for Indians called Carlisle Indian Industrial School. The decision was made to separate the Indian children from their families to fully civilize them in education and religion.
However, Charles Loomis opposed the civilization of Indians when he encountered Indian parents in New Mexico, mourning for their children to come back from the Albuquerque Indian School. Charles Loomis was not the only one who opposed the harsh treatment of Indian students. In 1879, Helen Hunt Jackson, an American writer and activist, was very much engaged to issues of Indians. She publicized the government's mistreatments, wrote letters to the New York Times, exposed the corrupt Indian agents and military officers, and wrote books about the United States treatment of Native Americans. Throughout the 19th century, In the 1800s effort to kill the Indian and save the man, the United States of America's government threw thousands of helpless Native American adolescents into boarding schools. There, they stripped them of their native culture, 
and attempted to raise them in a fashion that would integrate them into American life. This particular Native American versus American settler conflict shows how ambitious intentions and deceitful diplomacy can lead to limited success and major consequences, including the discontent of many and the near extinction of a cultural generation.